this. Is he calm before the storm? This is before all of the chaos in this yard and the honey yards really start to take place and really start to unfold because this is the last week of March. So next week is April and that means that the full bee season is really going to start kicking up. So I figured I'd sit down and have a little bit of a chat with you guys and kind of circle back around to some of the things I was talking about last year for what are my goals and my plans for this upcoming year because this is the year that I really put forth all of my beekeeping dreams and really start putting them into action and see if they play out like I'm hoping. So I have, my queen breeder and I have this breeding yard, which we will now be calling Bee Yard 51, like Area 51. Like I've said before, this is the yard that we're gonna be, be performing so many different experiments in. We're gonna make tons of mistakes. We're gonna find out a lot of other cool things um, scientifically and just whatever we find out um, in this bee yard. And this is where all of our genetics are the original home base for where they come from. No bees come in, only bees come out. Um, this is pretty much the safe haven of our genetic line and any other ideas and theories that we have, we test here. Um, so on top of this, we have two other honey yards that we do have, um, pretty much cemented in and ready to be set up and everything, which that will be happening very soon. Um, because like I keep saying next week is April, which that's when a lot of our beehives really start kicking up. We are starting to get some pollen coming into our beehives right now, which I'm actually going to get pollen on all of these hives and all of my hives back on the west side of Michigan, um, sometime this weekend or even tomorrow. And um really get those kicks started and get ready for splitting because my next goal for this year which i talked about last year is i still plan to get up to 100 colonies that is my plan i know that sounds crazy but i think i can do it um i think that casey and i can do it and it won't be difficult we're sitting at around um well, actually, shh, I'm not going to tell you guys that number. I am still debating on whether or not I want to keep some of my hives over on the west side of Michigan, just so I could see how that how that um, honey flow turns out in that new location, since I never really got to figure that out last year. And there's a lot of wildflower fields in that area. So stay tuned on that. But I will be moving a lot of those hives here. Last year, I learned a lot about how to do single frame split and how to build up comb really, really fast. So I'm hoping to be able to use all of that knowledge that I gained from that in being able to split all of these colonies into 100 this springtime um, because we're going to be pushing some limits doing that. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be a lot of challenges we're going to face doing that. Um, it's going to take a lot of work on both Casey and I's part to be able to manage everything and make sure that everything's doing okay. Make sure everything's queen right. Make sure everything's building up all right. Make sure everything has uh, frames that are checkerboarded so that they can build up the colony quickly and effectively. Um, so it's going to be a really interesting year and it's kind of a toss up to see how exactly it's going to turn out. Um, but I'm really excited to see what will actually happen. And one of the other goals that I do have for this year is I would like to dip my toes in pollination. I have not done any pollinating contracts yet, but I would like to start doing that. I want to hopefully do one this summertime. And then my other goal is to be able to send out some colonies this winter to the almond fields. I would like to start to be my toes in that and seeing what I can do and seeing um, how everything works and everything when it comes to pollination. So that will be an interesting journey trying to figure that out. So stay tuned for that. And then my last goal for this year is I would like to see if I can produce 1,000 mated queens. Now, grafting them is not going to be an issue um, because Casey, that is actually his strong suit. He is a phenomenal grafter. Um, I'll post up a picture of some of the frames that he's done. He has a really high success rate when it comes to grafting. He's just completely killed that and narrowed in his talent on that. Um, so that's not going to be an issue. 
The real challenge though that we are going to face is trying to mate 1000 queens. Um, so that is going to be interesting to see how that goes if we're able to do it. Um, I will be doing a giveaway sometime this spring or early summer so keep an eye out for that and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that announcement that I will be giving away free queens sometime this year. So shh, you didn't hear that from me, <laughs> um, but it is coming. So I know how my personality can be where I just want everything all at once. So I'm going to try to keep my goals to just that this year um, and not push too far because yeah, I can push a little bit too far sometimes sooner than I'm able to and definitely don't want to do that. Um, but I guess one last goal though is I do want to just keep giving back to the beekeeping community and instead of taking just give everything back through these videos that is what I love to do so much. Um, this is a part of the reason why I even fell in love with beekeeping because it was able to give me um, a way to be able to give that love that I feel inside myself for bees back to you guys through these videos and through the camera. So. Of course, I would love to keep doing that and hopefully giving you guys some uh, inspiration and knowledge in terms of beekeeping and just bring you along the entire journey of from where I started to where I'll hopefully end up being one day and building an entire bee business and everything. Um, so those are my goals for the year. Now, one thing that I do wanna talk a little bit about are what are my fears for the year? Um, because it is important to address those because sometimes we can kind of just walk along a path and then we don't even realize that we're trying to kind of like shut out or avoid these fears in our head. So it's good to always address those so that you know, so that you pretty much know what they are. And one of those, um, which is kind of like I figured anybody would feel this way when they're starting a business, starting to pursue a big goal or dream that they have. And that is that fear of failure. Um, but of course, that's not really going to do me any good. So yes, I can have that fear, but no matter what, if I don't try, then that is even worse than failing. That is failing. At least trying, I am not failing. I am going to learn along the way and make adjustments and all of that. So at the end of the day, even though if I try and it just completely falls through and fails, at least I tried and that is all that matters. And my second fear. So I talked about last year that I wanted to be fully treatment free. Now, in a couple of my last videos, I rephrased this and said, I don't want to be treatment free. I want to be chemical free. Um, and I'm still going to be pursuing this. So this year, the plan is going to be fully chemical free. Now, there's a lot of fear that can go behind this because there's a lot of people that can say that this is not possible and there's other people that say that it is possible. So this is kind of like the, uh, the back and forth in beekeeping itself. And you can see all the bees just like buzzing around me right now. I love it. Um, so that is definitely a fear of mine um, just because there is a possibility that I can lose all the hives because I did not treat with chemicals. But that is a risk I'm willing to take because my end goal in all of this is truly just to be able to produce the best queen I possibly can for area that I don't have to put chemicals on. A bee that you don't have to baby and a bee that is pretty much indestructible, that can manage moisture, that can make it through our winters without tons and tons of food, um, that can make it through the entire year without any chemical treatments. I feel like we baby a lot of our bees nowadays and I want to make a bee that can pretty much last and is durable. So at the end of the day, even if I lose my bees, in my opinion, it's honestly worth it because of the goal that I'm actually striving for. I don't care if I lose bees. What I care about is getting closer towards that goal of producing the best queen. So if I lose them all and I only have two hives survive, that's okay because those two hives 
are troopers. Those two highs are the genetics that I want because they made it through when all the else, all the other ones didn't. So that is my goal going forward um, for this year and for the years um, coming up as well. But so yeah, we'll see what happens. I would like to make beekeeping my full-time job eventually just because I am so passionate about it. But first thing on the agenda is to get pollen on all of these colonies. So I'll check back with you guys tomorrow or the next day when I'm putting pollen on all these colonies.